TCA cycle. Today we are going to start about the TCA cycle that is a tricarboxylic acid cycle and uh, it was discovered by a scientist whose name was Hans Krapp and it is also named on the, on the name of scientist who discovered it as Krapp's cycle. As well as its third name is citric acid cycle. And what is the TCA cycle? It is a series of chemical reactions that is involved for the formation of energy as well as the energy carrier molecules or the electron carrier molecules and the CO2 that is exhaled through the uh, breathing process. And we know very well that about the cellular respiration I have already told you that cellular respiration is the respiration or the breakdown of the glucose molecule to produce the energy as well as the CO2 that the complete oxidation of the glucose molecule and in glycolysis I have explained to you that glycolysis is a incomplete oxidation which means the glucose molecule is half or partially oxidized and converted into the pyruvate molecule and what uh, next about the pyruvate that pyruvate is changes into the acetyl CoA to get entry to inside the mitochondria because we know very well that glycolysis which is the first chemical reaction pathway of the uh, cellular respiration which is the first pathway of the cellular respiration and from the glycolysis what we have we have pyruvate and this pyruvate has to be converted itself into the acetyl CoA. So, uh, it will be easy for this acetyl CoA molecule to get enter into the mitochondria because we know very well that TCA cycle as well as electron transport chain both these pathways they take place in mitochondria. And if we talk about the structure of the mitochondria, we will know very well that in mitochondria we have an extracellular membrane or the extra uh, sorry, ex not extracellular but the extra mitochondrial membrane as well as the inner mitochondrial membrane. And pyruvate, when this pyruvate has to get entered into the uh, this matrix or inside the mitochondria, it has to convert itself into the acetyl CoA molecule. And after the conversion of the itself into the acetyl CoA molecule this acetyl CoA molecule will come into the matrix and all the enzymes for the uh, Krebs cycle they are present inside the matrix and inside the matrix what we have uh, all the enzymes which are uh, responsible for the TCA cycle or the TCA pathway and the enzymes complexes or the enzymes for the electron transport chain they are present in the inner mitochondrial membrane that we name as crestae. So uh, this is the introduction of the TCA cycle and this TCA cycle is very important pathway like uh, how it is very important this TCA cycle it is an amphibolic pathway what does it mean amphibolic pathway means this TCA cycle is involved in anabolic reactions as well as in catabolic reactions so that's why this uh, pathway is very important and at, as well as uh, we also name its reactions are uh, the TCA cycle as the anapleurotic reactions. Anapleurotic reactions, which means it has a replenishing mechanism. What is the replenishing mechanism, or what does it mean? It means whenever it's intermediates they are going to uh, low in their quantity or the in, in, in the amount it can fulfill its deficiency by the other metabolic pathways so that's why we name name its chemical reactions are as the anapleurotic reactions so once again I'm going to repeat 
all this that TCA cycle it's it was discovered by the Hans Krab so it is also named as Krab cycle and the third name is the citric acid cycle and this TCA cycle it takes place in the mitochondria and it is the third chemical pathway of the cellular respiration and what is the cellular respiration that is a complete oxidation of glucose into the CO2 as well as the energy and it involves glycolysis which takes place in the cytosol in the cytoplasm then the pyruvate to acetyl CoA its conversion and why it is important it is important to get enter the acetyl CoA into the mitochondrial matrix and from here the TCA cycle starts whenever this acetyl CoA uh, is inside the mitochondrial matrix they start the TCA cycle and after that we have the energy as well as electron carriers and those electron carriers are shuttled to the electron transport chain to get the energy to get the currency of the ATP which uh, currency of the energy that we name as ATP so uh, next i have explained you that cac cycle is very significant because it is an amphibolic pathway what does it mean it means it's intermediate in are involved in anabolic pathways as well as in catabolic pathways and its chemical reactions they are also uh, named as anapleurotic reactions what does it mean anapleurotic reactions mean they have a replenishing system which means whenever uh, any intermediate if, if any intermediate is low they can replenish itself by the other chemical compounds by the other metabolic pathways so that's why they are named as an apleurotic reaction and let's let's start the cycle what we have is acetyl coa and inside the in mitochondrial matrix what we have is oxaloacetic acid molecule this oxaloacetic acid molecule that will with the help of this acetyl coa that will be converted into citrate and the enzyme involved over here is number one citrate synthase and the second one what we have is the removal of a carbon in the form of co2 molecule as well as the removal of coa sh from here and the co2 are this uh, the removal of carbon is from the compound oxaloacetic acid not from the acetyl coa and the enzyme involved is citrate synthase and this is the irreversible chemical reaction next one is from here through our two uh, reactions this will be converted into isocitrate and the enzyme involved over here is this is the uh, reversible reaction and the enzyme involved here is aconitase this reaction is very significant very important clinically it's very important i will uh, explain you all the clinical uh, significance or clinical manifestation at the end of this pathway uh, of all these reactions about the each reaction i will explain you its clinical significance and what sort of problems we can have from here isocitrate that will be converted into another compound which we name as alpha keto glutarate and the enzyme involved over here is isocitrate dehydrogenase remember one thing whenever you see or you read uh, that in a chemical reaction dehydrogenase is involved it means there will always be the formation of NAD plus or NADH2 molecule and here we will have the formation of from NAD plus to NADH or plus H plus it's also uh, called as NADH2 and as well as we will have a removal of uh, carbon molecule that we name as CO2 
from here uh, from here uh, this alpha ketoglutarate it will be converted into the another compound that we name as succinyl CoA and here will be the addition of CoASH and the enzyme involved here is alpha ketoglutarate D hydrogenase and as I have told you that whenever there is involvement of dehydrogenase there will be the formation of NAD plus or NADH2 and in this case we will have NADH plus H positive from NAD plus. This enzyme is very significant, very important. Like the previous pathway, from pyruvate to acetyl CoA, we need a multi enzyme complex which we name as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And that multi enzyme complex consists of three enzymes E1, E2, E3, and five coenzymes, which are the different coenzymes like magnesium, like lipoic acid, like thymine pyrophosphate, and uh, as well as that NAD positive plus and FAD positive. Same here, this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is also a multi enzyme complex and it also has three sub enzymes or three uh, subunits E1, E2, E3, and five coenzymes magnesium, thymine pyrophosphate, lipoic acid, CoA. FAD positive and NAD positive. These are the five to six coenzymes which are involved in this uh, in, in, in the multi enzyme complex that we are naming, naming as alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. And this enzyme is responsible for the conversion of alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA. And from here, there will be the removal of this CoA portion and rearrangements and it will be converted into succinate and the enzyme here involved is thiokinase and here there will be the formation of GTP let me write this with blue one thiokinase because it is going to cleave the CoA portion from the succinyl CoA part CoA SH and the, there will be the formation of GTP from the GDP and next one is succinate that will be converted into fumarate and here the enzyme involved is succinate dehydrogenase again remember I have told you that whenever there is the involvement of dehydrogenase enzyme there will be the formation of any electron carrier and mostly we have talked about the NAD positive and NADH H plus H plus but when the energy gradient is low then NADH will not form but it will form another electron carrier that we name as FADH2 from the FAD positive. So, here we will have the formation of FADH2 and again there will be the removal of and other uh, and after that uh, from the succinate dehydrogenase this enzyme is also very significant why this enzyme is so significant the main reason is this is the enzyme which is a complex 2 of electron transport chain and this is the only enzyme which is present on the inner side of inner mitochondrial membrane I have told you that all the enzymes that they are present in the mitochondrial matrix but this is the only one enzyme that is not present in the mitochondrial mat matrix but it is attached to the inner side of the inner mitochondrial membrane and it is also the complex 2 of electron transport chain and from here from the fumarate to what we will have we will have another enzyme the malate 
and the enzyme involved is the fumarase and then again there will be the dehydrogenation and with the help of dehydrogenation, dehydrogenation the enzyme involved is malate dehydrogenase as i have already told you that whenever there is involvement of dehydrogenase enzyme there will be the formation of uh, nad positive or the nadh which is electron carrier like this nad positive that will be converted into and again we have oxaloacetic acid and it will start start a new cycle a new crap cycle so uh, these are uh, all the chemical reactions which are involved in the tca cycle now remember that we tell you about the irreversible and reversible pathways this reaction is reversible then all these three reactions these are irreversible and from here this reaction is also reversible all these three reactions are irreversible and this one is a irre uh, reversible this is also reversible and this reaction is also reversible so uh, so reaction number one and this one this one this one these four reactions these are irreversible while all the remaining reactions are reversible and this is the uh, this is the uh, these are the all these are the chemical reactions of the tca cycle or the citric acid cycle that we have studied that i have explained it to you let me once again uh, repeat this to you this is acetyl coa that will be attached with the oxaloacetic acid and there will be the removal of co2 as well as coash and the enzyme involved is citrate synthase and what we have the product that is the citrate citrate with the help of a conidase enzyme that will be converted into the isocitrate and this isocitrate compound with the help of dehydrogenase enzyme it will be converted into the alpha ketoglutarate and whenever i have told you whenever there is involvement of dehydrogenase there will be the formation of electron carrier here you can see nadh plus h positive and as well as there will be the removal of co2 molecule and next one is alpha ketoglutarate that will be converted into the succinyl coa and the enzyme involved over here is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and again there will also be the removal of co2 and from here uh, i have told you that this enzyme is seen as like the pyruvate dehydrogenase multi enzyme complex it has three uh, sub enzymes and five coenzymes uh, that I have already explained to you and from here alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl coa what we have succinyl coa this succinyl coa with the help of thiokinase it will be converted into another form succinate in which we will have the rearrangement of the atoms in the succinyl coa as well as a cleavage of coa portion and here the energy radical will be too low and we will have GDP in the form of GTP we can say that this GTP is converted into the GT, GTP and this GTP that will be converted into uh, GDP and it will give the ATP with the help of dinucleotide dikinase enzyme with the help of kinase enzyme it will remove one phosphate from here and it will attach this phosphate to the ADP and what we will have we have ATP and once again our uh, this molecule is ready to form another molecule of GTP so from here the succinate it will be converted into the fumarate with the help of enzyme succinate dehydrogenase and I have told you that this enzyme is very significant because this is not in the mitochondrial mitochondrial matrix but it is present on the inner side of the mitochondrial membrane and it is a part of the second complex of the electron transport chain and from here what we have at the end we have, will have at the end a fumarate molecule and this fumarate molecule will be converted into the malate with the help of an enzyme that we name as mal fumarase enzyme and this malate it will be converted into again oxaloacetic acid with the help of malate dehydrogenase enzyme and again there is involvement of dehydrogenase enzyme and what we will have at the end nadh plus h positive so oxaloacetic acid is ready to start an other crap cycle 
So these are all the chemical reactions and as well as the enzymes of this TCA cycle. Now the next thing is how you can remember this. It's very easy. Let me give you a mnemonic to memorize this. I'm going to raise this. And what is that mnemonic? It's very simple. Sorry. Citrate is a specific substrate is a specific substrate for making oxaloacetate. What is the mnemonic? Citrate is a specific substrate for making oxaloacetate. How? Citrate, here we know very well, this is a citrate. Then is isocitrate, you can see here. Isocitrate, citrate is. Then a, it means alpha ketoglutarate. And the next one is the specific, specific means succinyl CoA. The next one is the substrate, it means the succinate and for that stands for fumarate and making that stands for malate and oxaloacetate acetate you know very well so its pneumonic can pneumonic can be citrate is a, a specific substrate for making oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate so you can memorize the chemical reactions with the help of this pneumonic citrate is a specific substrate for making oxaloacetic acetate and the next thing is uh, which students the mostly suffer to memorize the name of the enzymes remember about the reaction about the substrate which is going to involve in that chemical reaction all names of the enzymes they starts from the substrate and end with the chemical reaction with the type of chemical reaction that is uh, going to happen are going to be within that chemical reaction for example isocitrate it's going to convert itself into the alpha ketoglutarate so how you will name it as we know very well that this type of chemical reaction is a dehydrogenation reaction so how we name it as isocitrate dehydrogenase i have told you that first of all uh, pick the name of substrate then at the end add the type of chemical reaction with ending is like isocitrate dehydrogenase type of chemical reaction is dehydrogenation substrate is isocitrate like this uh, what is the substrate that is isocitrate and what is the type of chemical reaction that is dehydrogenation so how you will name it as iso citrate and end uh, the name of chemical reaction with is like iso citrate dehydrogenase so like this you can memorize the name of enzymes in all chemical reactions or of the all chemical reactions I think this is clear to you now the next thing is what is the end product of this process what we have at the end at the end we have if we can we if we calculate its uh, energy budget at the end what we have uh, from here let's start here 1 NADH here second NADH here third NADH so uh, at the end we have three molecules of 
NADH2. And we know very well that in the glycolysis we had two molecules of pyruvate and if those two molecules of pyruvate they will enter into the uh, PDH complex pathway then we will have two molecules of acetyl CoA. Same here we will have two molecules of acetyl CoA. It means this crap cycle will operate twice not once. So, we can say that then we can multiply it as by 2 and what we have 6 NADH2 and again here we have FADH2 one molecule of FADH2 and this cycle is operating twice. So, we will have we will multiply it with 2 and at the end we have 2 FADH2 and one molecule of GTP and we know very well that's that this reaction is operating twice. So, we will we'll have 2 GTP we, which is equivalent to 2 molecules of ATP. So, if we calculate it at the end we know very well that one molecule of NADH2 is equal to 3 molecules of ATP like this. One molecule of NADH2 is equal to 3 ATPs. Actually, it is 2.5 ATPs, but we write it as 3 ATPs. In most books, you will find 3 ATP, and in few books, you will find it as 2.5 ATPs. And how many uh, NADH2 we, we have? We have 6 NADH2. So, if 1 NADH2 is equal to 3 ATP, then 6 NADH2 that would be equal to 6 multiplied by 3 and it will be 18 ATPs. So, 18 ATPs are here and 1 FADH is equal to 2 uh, sorry one here we have 2 FADH2 molecule and 1 FADH2 molecule it is equal to 2 molecules of ATP. I will prove this that how 1 NADH2 is equal to 3 ATP and how 1 FADH2 is equal to 2 ATP. I will prove this in electron transport chain. And how many FADH2 we have? We have 2 FADH2. So, 2 FADH2 that will be equal to 2 multiplied by 2 that is 4 ATP. And how many how many GTPs we have? We have 2 GTPs and we know very well that these 2 GTPs are equal to 2 ATPs. So, let us calculate it number 1 from NADH2, number 2 from FADH2 and number 3 from GTP. So, let us calculate this portion. From the NADH2 we have total number of ATPs that is 18. And from the FADH2 we have total 4 ATPs and from GTP we have total 2 ATPs. So, let us uh, calculate it or add it 18 plus 4 22, 22 2 plus 2 that is uh, 24 ATPs. So, in the crab cycle we have total 24 ATPs if this cycle operates twice. And if it is operate once, then we have 12 ATPs, but when it operates twice, we have 24 ATPs. Because we know very well, it, it will uh, always operate twice, because we know very well that we have 2 molecules of acetyl-CoA from the coming pyruvate. And so, it will operate twice and it will give 24 ATPs total uh, at the end of this pathway. I think this is clear to you and in glycolysis we know very well that in glycolysis we had 6 molecules of ATP and glycolysis plus this one uh, crap cycle we have 30 ATPs and in PDH2 acetyl CoA we also have 6 molecules of ATP and 30 plus 6 the total budget will be 36. Uh, let me uh, show you how it is 36. I am going to uh, raise this.
in glycolysis we have 6 ATPs. In PDH complex pathway we have 6 ATPs and in TCA cycle we have 24 ATPs and calculate it it will be 36 ATPs and so we can say that with the complete oxidation of one molecule of glucose or one gram of glucose we have 36 molecules of ATP so one molecule of glucose that is yielding 36 molecules of ATP that is quite enough for a cell to perform its activities I think this is uh, clear to you about all these chemical reactions and the next one is CO2 1 2 and here 3 so in this we have three molecules of CO2 and we know very well that this TCA cycle is operating twice so we will have six molecules of CO2 you know very well about the equation of the respiration C6 H12 O6 plus O2 that will be converted into 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O so here 1 2 3 and this cycle is operating twice so in total we will have six molecules of co2 in the Krebs cycle is that clear so what is the end six molecules of co2 and 24 molecules of atps that is the end of tca cycle i think this is clear to you